big one that was. Welcome to The Wellness Show. I'm Dr. Keisha Christian, your host, and so glad that you've joined us for another episode. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you, to you and your loved ones and your friends. What a beautiful Thanksgiving day that I've experienced. There's so much to be thankful for. I'm thankful for life itself, for family and friends. Thankful that you have tuned in to our show today. Thankful that I can host the health and wellness talk show. Life is wonderful. A beautiful day as this of having Thanksgiving feast. I enjoy turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, green beans, so much more. And to finalize it, to put a stamp on it, I enjoyed a slice of pecan pie. So I had such a great Thanksgiving day. And typically after I enjoy Thanksgiving, I love to go to a neighboring lake and go jogging or walking. So I just completed a nice jog. And the weather is so nice it's enjoyable so it doesn't make me feel too guilty that I enjoyed all that great food it's really one time per year Thanksgiving that we can be so thankful for everything and enjoy a feast we're always thankful and grateful for so many things but I think Thanksgiving is a day that we can come together with family and friends and just reflect on all the things that we're thankful for. So I hope you shared with your family and friends what you're thankful for. And today, I would love for you to share with us what you're thankful for and how you spent your Thanksgiving day. So check us out on Facebook at Wellness Talk Show and leave us a message, share with us how you spent your Thanksgiving and what you are so thankful for. We'd love to hear from you and I'm sure others would love to hear about what your experiences are. So today our topic is going to be running the race. What race are you running? There are so many races that you, people can run. You can run the race of being a great student in high school and college and getting that degree or even that diploma. You can run the race of being a great parent, a great sibling, a great aunt, a great uncle. You can run the race of being a great employee and just really, really honing into your career. Maybe you're on the race to get a new certi certification for your career. There are so many races you can run. Just remember, the race is not given to the swiftest or the fastest necessarily, but it is given to the person that endureth. So when you mark your race, when you decide what race you're gonna go on and you start that journey, continue along and enjoy that journey. And once you've finished and crossed the finish line, give yourself a medal, give yourself a certificate to acknowledge all of the work that you put into it. It's so joyful, meaningful, and it feels great to have that accomplishment. So a couple of weeks ago, we had the City of Oaks Marathon here in Raleigh, North Carolina. What an amazing event. So the City of Oaks Marathon, there are various races. There's a marathon, full marathon, which is 26.2 miles. There's a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles. There is a 10K, which is 6.2 miles. There is a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. And the cutest of all that I love is the kids mile where you have lots of kids that are lining up and getting ready to run a mile race so races aren't necessarily for just the adult but they are for children as well and there are various races that you can run so I always encourage people when you are running that race when you're carving out that race to run to ensure that you've prepared for it it's important to prepare first your mindset is what am I going to be doing and what steps do I need to take in order to get to the final outcome of victory, of 
crossing that finish line, of finishing that race. I am a runner, so I can really relate to running a lot. Now, I'm going to share a story with you that is going to be ah, a little bit in a, in a circle, but I want you to hopefully relate your race to it. So, I have been a runner basically all my life since I was preteen. And in high school, I used to run track, and I was a sprinter. Well, fast forward a few years, I've always enjoyed running and decided to go ahead and continue running. So as years went by, I ran anywhere from three to seven miles on a continuous basis. So three to seven miles per day, perhaps anywhere from three to five days a week. So running was a discipline that I already knew and felt really natural for me. And a few years ago, I decided to run the City of Marathon race. And I decided three weeks prior to the race, I had no idea what the course was. I wasn't even thinking about getting prepared at that time. But I had a friend who was also a runner and I said, let's run the City of Marathon race. He thought I was crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time people think I'm crazy. And what I marked out to do in preparation is on three weeks prior to the race is to go ahead and run the course. And so I went out that day with my partner and we ran the race. I was great for eight and nine miles. At the 10th mile, I developed shin splints because again, I've always been a sprinter. So my muscles and my body's trained to run on the balls of my feet. You cannot do that and sustain a marathon on the balls of your feet. The best way to run is to retrain, and this is what I had to do, is to run mid-stance, more so in the middle of my feet when I'm hitting or striking the ground. So back to the story, when I was at mile 10 in my practice run for the marathon, I was starting to get splint, shin splints. At mile 12, I had to stop and start walking. At mile 13, my partner had to lug me over his shoulder, thank God he was tall and muscular, and he had to basically carry me back to the car, which was about 13 miles. So we would periodically stop, give him breaks, uh, and at times I was able to walk short distances back, but I wish I would have prepared for that race. So fast forward a little bit, I finally got back to my car, and I said, okay, I know what I did wrong. Now, I'm a physical therapist, so I'm always assessing better ways of doing something physically, right? So I said, let me go ahead and try to change my running pattern. And that's when I decided, let me do the strike at mid-stance on the ground. So striking the ground at mid-stance, that way I don't put a lot of pressure on my shins. For those of you who do not know what shin splints are, they basically are very, very painful. And it's right in front of your lower leg, right near your tibia area. Those muscles, you can get micro tears in the muscles, you can get micro tears in the bones, but it's a lot of pressure buildup in the structures in that area, and it's a very painful and difficulty walking. So once you have shin splints, you have to take care of them with icing and resting and of course doing stretching exercises and then also strengthening more in a centric manner so that you can build up some muscles. So I got prepared. I did those things to get prepared for the next practice run that I was going to do the following week. So my shin splints were in full recovery mode. I was ready with my running technique of striking the ground mid stance as, as opposed to walking on the balls of my feet. And guess what? I went for that, what I call it is that first full run of the marathon course and I finished and did well. I was pretty happy and so I said, okay, next week is the marathon 
So perhaps I would just run a couple of days at the beginning of the week, short runs, and then I would just rest my body in preparation for the marathon. But I was pretty confident that I would be okay for the marathon. Well, the marathon came around and I did not expect such an invigorating experience. First of all, I had an extra hour of sleep that day. It was daylight savings time, so luckily we had an extra hour of sleep, which we all needed to run that race of a marathon. Secondly, I didn't anticipate all of the spectators being around and cheering you on. That was wonderful. The spectators just being there. Support is so important when you are running a race, whatever race that may be. I also loved hearing the Eye of the Tiger, that song that gave me that pump, that energy, that just challenge of going faster and faster and more and more. So it was so invigorating. Now, unfortunately, I didn't eat breakfast that morning uh, and I can generally not eat breakfast when I'm going for a run. So I was fine throughout my run. However, at maybe about miles seven, eight, nine, and 10, you see various people handing out donuts and cookies and candy and uh, brownies. <laughs> of course, I didn't indulge in those because I, would, I knew that I was gonna get sick if I did that. I'm just not one that is used to consuming food when I'm getting ready for a run. However, at mile 17, I was getting really low on energy and they have various energy boosting stations throughout the course of your run. So I had stopped and I had a little bit of Gatorade and I pop popped in some of those energy gels. They weren't too delicious at all. They weren't appealing, but that's okay. I needed some fast energy. It did get me through. I knew that I only had nine miles to go so I could power through. However, at mile 21, I started getting sick to my stomach from the energy gels. And I just continued to prevail, power through and power through and power through. And so at mile 25, I said, okay, I'm at home stretch. I'm almost there. The finish line is close in sight. So I kept running and kept running. Now, maybe about a few hundred yards from the finish line I was able to see the finish line and all the spectators and that's so exciting to see it gave me a flashback of when I was in high school running in track when I used to run the 100 the 1 by 10 relay and the 220 sprinting competitions and so I got in gear and I ran and I ran that race as fast as I could to the finish line and I crossed the finish line. In the distant ear, I heard people say, wow, look at her run. And I don't think that it was, had anything to do with, I was fast. I don't think it had anything to do with that. I, I believe that it was, I had a flashback of when I was a sprinter and that just kicked in. So sometimes you have to bring to your remembrance some things that give you that power, that energy to prevail, that energy to push through and just win. And that's what I did. I finished that race and I was so happy that I completed it. It was an amazing accomplishment for me, my first marathon, and it was very exciting to have friends with me, uh, spectators with me, and so many people. Now, because of those energy gels, I was not feeling well, and I had to leave. I wasn't able to attend any of the award ceremony, but that's okay. I went home and uh, nourished myself to get better. And then came the cool down period because it's very important that after a race that you cool down. Whether it's reflection, uh, in this particular scenario since I was running, of course I needed to cool down with activity and stretching. So I did a lot of stretching to my body. And then over the next three days, I did some Epsom salt baths, which were great and I didn't have any soreness at all. I also consumed a lot of good healthy foods, 
of course, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and I focused on foods that were on the high glycemic index so that they could just continue to repair as well as foods that were higher in protein so it could continue to repair my body. So it was a great experience. Even though I didn't prepare for it, I had a great journey and I completed my race. I got my medal and that was so wonderful to receive. Now during the City of Oaks marathon a couple weeks ago, I also had an opportunity to talk to a few individuals that did not prepare for their race. One gentleman, his name is David, he didn't prepare for the race, but he is so used to clocking multiple miles per year. So he's a runner, he's used to running, and he did not have any concerns at all. So stay tuned to watch what he had to say. We are so excited to have David here, who's going to be running in the 5K at the City of Oaks Marathon today on November 5th at North Carolina State University. David, tell us how exciting is it to run in a 5K? Have you done this before? I've run five marathons. Oh, wow. Four half marathons and a bunch of 5Ks. Uh, so I, I run all year round. Excellent, excellent. How did you prepare for this event? I run. 600 miles a year, 700 miles a year, you know, you don't, I don't really have to prepare for a 5K. Right, exactly, yeah, it sounds like you're an avid runner, and that's fantastic. Well, did you have breakfast this morning? I did, I ate a little bit of oatmeal. Good, I'm so glad that you fueled up. I am so excited that you're here running in this, this event today. Have a great time, it's so exciting, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a great luck. All right, I hope you win, number one. <laughs> Thanks, David. Now, the second group of people that I had an opportunity to speak to were three gentlemen, very nice, and they actually work for the same employer, and they decided to all run together. Now, they did not prepare for the race, and they did very well. So listen to what they said. We are so glad to have Tim, Mark, and Ryan here. They are going to be running the race at City of Oaks, and they are excited. They're going to be a, they're a group that's going to run together and enjoy just the day. It's such a vibrant day. So tell us, how did you prepare for this event? <laughs> Not much, actually. <laughs> we decided about two weeks ago we just wanted to do this and it'd be a fun work event. And uh, so, yeah, we kind of trained a lot, but we're just out to have fun. Wonderful. Now, did you eat breakfast? I did not. I had some water. I did. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Just a cliff bar. <laughs> just a cliff bar. Wonderful. And is this your first race? This is my first race. Oh, wow. It's been years since I did one. Okay. So we have newbies and semi-newbies, I guess you could say. Yes, exactly. We're excited to have you all. I wish you the best. Run your race, have fun, and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Coming first, all three of you together. Yeah. All right, take care. Make it a powerful one. Thanks. I love that. I love when people can go out and have a great time when they are running the race. Life itself is a journey. Why not just have a great time while you are running the life race, while you are going through that journey, while you are striving to be the best you can be. That is great. I love that. Now, if you're running the race of health and wellness, I encourage you to do that every day. Sometimes it may be difficult. We understand that. However, just remember, it's never too late to start. Now remember, it's never too late to start. It's never too late to pick up and finish if you've fallen by the wayside. Run that race of health and wellness. Make sure that you're consuming some good foods, healthy foods, foods that allow you to be energetic, allow you to run your course, foods that nourish your body inside and outside. Stay away from those foods that could be high in sugar, high in carbs, like simple carbs, that are really not beneficial for you. Don't consume too many fats, and just try to consume good, wholesome foods throughout the day. Now, in terms of snacking, 
choose healthier snacks like yogurt and fruit, maybe some vegetables and also some almonds or nuts. They are great snacks to consume. But I encourage you, continue to run your race and I know that you will meet your goal. Don't forget to give yourself a certificate or some type of award or medal that encourages you to get to that finish line and it also shows a sense of achievement and share with others that you are running a race so that they can encourage you on your journey and then you can also enjoy and celebrate with your medal certificate or award with other people a lot of people need that encouragement so sharing with them encouraging them as well is very very important I thank you for joining us today on the wellness show it's been a great experience sharing with you about Thanksgiving sharing with you about running your race sharing with you about my experiences in running a race there's so many great benefits of coming together as a community sharing with each other, striving to be the best that we can be with everything that we have been blessed with, and also taking care of ourselves, taking care of our own bodies, health and wellness wise, and then also to encourage others on their health and wellness journey. So the Thanksgiving day is not over. It's not too late for you to go to the lake and enjoy a nice walk or jog. It's not too late for you to grab a frisbee or a football or a soccer ball, take your family and friends, and go and have fun on a nice open field. Get a little bit of exercise and try to just really metabolize all that food that you've really consumed. But at the end of the day, it's all about enjoying the day. Enjoying the day with family and friends, feasting, doing something fun, whether it's outdoors, indoors with games, just having a great time. It's nice to enjoy that day of Thanksgiving together. And I encourage you along your race, continue to run and carve out that race for yourself and share also with us on Facebook how your journey is and what your journey is in terms of your race. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to celebrate with you. And we always want you to be well. And I encourage you every day, continue to strive for a healthier you. Continue to share with family and loved ones about a healthier you. Oh, and remember, today is Black Friday, so you may be going out shopping. Don't forget to get those TheraBands, those exercise balls, exercise gear for yourself and for loved ones for Christmas. So enjoy, enjoy that time. Enjoy this season. And most importantly, you, your family and friends, be well. Thank you for tuning in to The Wellness Show.